So next one uh, is remote catalog as the major feature. And so, you know, remote catalog is, is really, it's the creating these uh, remote catalog items and the, and the workflows. Uh, it's all done in a provider instance. So you know, as we go through, you'll see it looks very similar to creating a service catalog item. You define what these variables are. Um, you're able to attach a, but you have to attach a flow to it, which basically says where the fulfillment is going to be performed. Um, and then you, you can go ahead and then share them uh, with consumers. And so you can share a item with uh, one specific uh, consumer or customer or you could create a, a, a criteria that will share it with multiple. So let's say, you know, using the example of uh, selling laptops or a device as a service, uh, let's say. Anyone who purchases the device as a service uh, plan for a laptop, you know, they have a remote catalog item that will be pushed out to them for RMA. So you can define it and say, well, any customer that has a, a contract, you know, or has an entitlement, um, then they automatically get this. And so now you've created something that's using uh, basically metadata within the system to manage who gets this instead of uh, managing it on an individual catalog item. You know, looking at it for a, uh, like now on now support, you know, you put this, you create this contact and you say, let's say impact as an example. Anyone that who has, you know, the impact standard gets these items. Anyone who gets the you know, middle tier gets these and the, the upper tier gets these items. And so now as an administrator within ServiceNow, you don't have to manage these on an individual customer basis. It basically just when the contract information gets updated in the system, it will see that and automatically uh, update that and publish that information to a customer. Or, you know, if they don't use that service anymore, then it can go ahead and remove it. So on the consumer side, they get this record producer, uh, remote record producer, uh, and it shows up within the, the catalog portal experience. So by default, it shows up within the, uh, the IT service portal. Um, they, uh, as a customer, they can go ahead and change it if they want to put it in different catalogs and different categories. Uh, and then they just go ahead and uh, prove it. <clears throat> and then uh, it's now usable and can be ordered uh, by their end users. So it's, it's really uh, bringing in um, a, an approach where it is a catalog item, you know, over on the customer side, we see in the bottom right picture that now they can go ahead and fill in. It's, it's very similar to a record producer. Um, you can go ahead and set, you know, descriptions, icons, variables, UI policies. You cannot do scripts uh, to push into the customer instance. That's something that was uh, a design decision. Uh, from a security perspective, uh, because we don't want to have a provider that can just, you know, blindly push scripts into a consumer instance from a security, uh, a security view, you know, it could break something, it could cause issues over there. So it is restricted from uh, scripts. And then on the consumer side, as I said, it's just a, a portal item uh, now that they can go in and users can start ordering. And then this is what it looks like now on uh, from the actual flow itself. So on the consumer side, you know, a user is going to go into the portal. They're going to fill out the information in that in that catalog item, and they're going to go ahead and hit submit. It's going to generate a provider task uh, on their side. That provider task is now that record that they have of essentially that uh, request. So on the consumer side, it's not going to be a traditional request RITM SC tasks. It's going to create that provider task uh, itself, and, and that's what it was going to give a lot of scalability uh, because now you don't have to, you know, connect or glue together two workflows from one side to the other. Uh, RPS will be used to replicate that information or that provider task over to the provider instance. On the provider instance, there is then going to be a uh, that flow that I mentioned that is used and, and configured for that uh, uh, remote catalog item. To now get all of that variables, that data, uh, to the process uh, that is going to be fulfilled on. So on the provider side, you know, the fulfillers are not going to be really looking at the provider task. It's more of a pass-through record, and it's going to take that uh, the flow. It's going to take that information and send it over to an incident or a case or a problem, a change or even another service catalog item. Uh, that it can fill out. And then that process, you know, that you have up here is now going to go through on the uh, provider instance. And as they make updates, 
uh, to those records and send over any additional comments or change the state on it. That will then flow back down through the provider task over to the consumer instance so they have visibility of what the status is and are able to communicate if there needs to be any updates. Uh, so again, on the consumer side, they're going to be interacting with the provider task. On the provider instance, they're going to be interacting with whatever that uh, target test destination is, an incident case, you know, service catalog item. Um, that is where they are going to be uh, working within the provider instance. Mm -hmm.